Optionals. You use optionals in situations where a value may be absent. An optional represents two possibilities. Either there is a value and you can unwrap the optional to access that value, or there is not a value at all. Note, the concept of optionals does not exist in C or Objective-C. The nearest thing in Objective-C is the ability to return nil from a method that would otherwise return an object, with nil meaning the absence of a valid object. However, this only works for objects. It does not work for structures, basic C types, or enumeration values. For these types, Objective-C methods typically return a special value, such as ns not found, to indicate the absence of a value. This approach assumes that the method's caller knows there is a special value to test against and remembers to check for it. Swift's optionals let you indicate the absence of a value for any type at all without a need for special constants. Here is an example of how optionals can be used to cope with the absence of a value. Swift's int type has an initializer which tries to convert a string value into an int value. However, not every string can be converted into an integer. The string 123 can be converted into the numeric value 123, but the string hello world does not have an obvious numeric value to convert to. The example uses the initializer to try to convert a string into an int. Because the initializer might fail, it returns an optional int rather than an int. An optional int is written as int question mark, not int. The question mark indicates that the value it contains is optional, meaning that it might contain some int value or it might contain no value at all. It cannot contain anything else, such as a bool value or a string value. It is either an int or it is nothing at all. Nil. You set an optional variable to a valueless state by assigning it the special value nil. Note, you cannot use nil with non-optional constants and variables. If a constant or variable in your code needs to work with the absence of a value under certain conditions, always declare it as an optional value of the appropriate type. If you define an optional variable without providing a default value, the variable is automatically set to nil for you. Note, Swift's nil is not the same as nil in Objective-C. In Objective-C, nil is a pointer to a non-existent object. In Swift, nil is not a pointer. It is the absence of a value of a certain type. Optionals of any type can be set to nil, not just object types. If statements and forced unwrapping. You can use an if statement to find out whether an optional contains a value by comparing the optional against nil. You perform this comparison with the equal to operator or the not equal to operator. If an optional has a value, it is considered to be not equal to nil. Once you are sure that the optional does contain a value, you can access its underlying value by adding an exclamation point to the end of the optional's name. The exclamation point effectively says, I know that this optional definitely has a value. Please use it. This is known as forced unwrapping of the optional's value. For more about the if statement, see control flow. Note, trying to use an exclamation mark to access a non-existent optional value triggers a runtime error. Always make sure that an optional contains a non-nil value before using the exclamation mark to force unwrap its value. You use optional binding to find out whether an optional contains a value, and if so, to make that value available as a temporary constant or variable. Optional binding can be used with if and while statements to check for a value inside an optional and to extract that value into a constant or variable as part of a single action. If and while statements are described in more detail in control flow. Write an optional binding for an if statement as follows. If let constant name equals some optional and then statements. You can rewrite the possible number example from the optional section to use the optional binding rather than forced unwrapping. This code can be read as, if the optional int returned by int possible number contains a value, set a new constant called actual number to the value contained in the optional. If the conversion is successful, the actual number constant becomes available for use within the first branch of the if statement. It has already been initialized with the value contained within the optional, and so you don't use the exclamation mark suffix to access its value. 
In this example, actual number is simply used to print the result of the conversion. You can use both constants and variables with optional binding. If you wanted to manipulate the value of actual number within the first branch of the if statement, you could write if var actual number instead, and the value contained within the optional would be made available as a variable rather than a constant. You can include as many optional bindings and Boolean conditions in a single if statement as you need to, separated by commas. If any of the values in the optional bindings are nil, or any Boolean condition evaluates to false, the whole if statement's condition is considered to be false. The following if statements are equivalent. Note, constants and variables created with optional binding in an if statement are available only within the body of the if statement. In contrast, the constants and variables created with a guard statement are available in the lines of code that follow the guard statement as described in early exit. Implicitly unwrapped optionals. As described above, optionals indicate that a constant or variable is allowed to have no value. Optionals can be checked with an if statement to see if a value exists and can be conditionally unwrapped with optional binding to access the optionals value if it does exist. Sometimes, it is clear from a program structure that an optional will always have a value after that value is first set. In these cases, it is useful to remove the need to check and unwrap the optional's value every time it is accessed because it can be safely assumed to have a value all of the time. These kinds of optionals are defined as implicitly unwrapped optionals. You write an implicitly unwrapped optional by placing an exclamation point at rather than a question mark after the type that you want to make optional. Rather than placing an exclamation point after the optional's name when you use it, you place an exclamation point after the optional's type when you declare it. Implicitly unwrapped optionals are useful when an optional's value is confirmed to exist immediately after the optional is first defined and can definitely be assumed to exist at every point thereafter. The primary use of implicitly unwrapped optionals in Swift is during class initialization as described in unowned references and implicitly unwrapped optional properties. An implicitly unwrapped optional is a normal optional behind the scenes, but can also be used like a non-optional value without the need to unwrap the optional value each time it is accessed. The following example shows the difference in behavior between an optional string and an implicitly unwrapped optional string when accessing the wrapped value as an explicit string. You can think of an implicitly unwrapped optional as giving permission for the optional to be force unwrapped if needed. When you use an implicitly unwrapped optional value, Swift first tries to use it as an ordinary optional value. If it cannot be used as an optional, Swift force unwraps the value. In the code, the optional value assumed string is force unwrapped before assigning its value to implicit string because implicit string has an explicit non-optional type of string. In the code below, optional string does not have an explicit type, so it is an ordinary optional. If an implicitly unwrapped optional is nil and you try to access its wrapped value, you will trigger a runtime error. The result is exactly the same as if you place an exclamation point after a normal optional that does not contain a value. You can check whether an implicitly unwrapped optional is nil the same way you check a normal optional. You can also use an implicitly unwrapped optional with optional binding to check and unwrap its value in a single statement. Note, do not use an implicitly unwrapped optional when there is a possibility of a variable becoming nil at a later point. Always use a normal optional type if you need to check for a nil value during the lifetime of a variable. Error handling. You use error handling to respond to error conditions your program may encounter during execution. In contrast to optionals, which can use the presence or absence of a value to communicate success or failure of a function, Error handling allows you to determine the underlying cause of failure and, if necessary, propagate the error to another part of your program. When a function encounters an error condition, it throws an error. That function's caller can then catch the error and respond appropriately. A function indicates that it can throw an error by including the throws keyword in its declaration. When you call a function that can throw an error, you prepend the try keyword to the expression. Swift automatically propagates errors out of their current code until they are handled by a catch clause.
A do statement creates a new containing scope, which allows errors to be propagated to one or more catch clauses. Here is an example of how error handling can be used to respond to different error conditions. In this example, the make a sandwich function will throw an error if no clean dishes are available or if any ingredients are missing. Because make a sandwich can throw an error, the function call is wrapped in a try expression. By wrapping the function call in a do statement, any errors that are thrown will be propagated to the provided catch clauses. If no error is thrown, the eat a sandwich function is called. If an error is thrown and it matches the sandwich error out of clean dishes case, then the wash dishes function will be called. If an error is thrown and it matches sandwich error dot missing ingredients case, then the buy groceries function is called with the associated string value captured by the catch pattern. Throwing, catching, and propagating errors is covered in greater detail in error handling. Assertions and preconditions are checks that happen at runtime. You use them to make sure an essential condition is satisfied before executing any further code. If the Boolean condition in the assertion or precondition evaluates to true, code execution continues as normal. If the condition evaluates to false, the current state of the program is invalid, code execution ends, and your app is terminated. You use assertions and preconditions to express the assumptions you make and the expectations you have while coding, so you can include them as part of your code. Assertions help you find mistakes and incorrect assumptions during development, and preconditions help you detect issues in production. In addition to verifying your expectations at runtime, assertions and preconditions also become a useful form of documentation within the code. Unlike the error conditions discussed in error handling above, assertions and preconditions are not used for recoverable or expected errors. Because a failed assertion or precondition indicates that an invalid program state, there is no way to catch a failed assertion. Using assertions and preconditions is not a substitute for designing your code in such a way that invalid conditions are unlikely to arise. However, using them to enforce valid data and state causes your app to terminate more predictably if an invalid state occurs and helps make the problem easier to debug. Stopping execution as soon as an invalid state is detected also helps limit the damage caused by that invalid state. The difference between assertions and preconditions is in when they are checked. Assertions are checked only in debug build, but preconditions are checked in both debug and production build. In production builds, the condition inside an assertion is not evaluated. This means you, you can use as many assertions as you want during your development process without impacting performance in production. Debugging with assertions. You write an assertion by calling the assert file line function from the Swift standard library. You pass this function an expression that evaluates to true or false and a message to display if the result of the condition is false. In this example, code execution continues if age is greater than or equal to zero evaluates to true, that is, if the value of age is non-negative. If the value of age is negative, as in the code above, then age greater than or equal to zero evaluates to false and the assertion fails, terminating the application. You can omit the assertion message, for example, when it would just repeat the condition as prose. If the code already checks the condition, you use the assertion failure function to indicate that an assertion has failed. Enforcing preconditions. Use a precondition whenever a condition has the potential to be false, but must definitely be true for your code to continue execution. For example, Use a precondition to check that a subscript is not out of bounds or to check that a function has been passed a valid value. You write a precondition by calling the precondition function. You pass this function an expression that evaluates to true or false and a message to display if the result of the condition is false, for example. You can also call the precondition failure function to indicate that a failure has occurred. For example, if the default case of a switch was taken, but all valued input data should have been handled by one of the switch's other cases. Note, if you compile in unchecked mode, preconditions are not checked. The compiler assumes that preconditions are always true and it optimizes your code accordingly. However, the fatal error function always halts execution regardless of optimization settings.
You can use the fatal error function during prototyping and early development to create stubs for functionality that have not been implemented yet by writing fatal error unimplemented as the stub implementation. Because fatal errors are never optimized out, unlike assertions or preconditions, you can be sure that execution always halts if it encounters a stub implementation. I hope you find out this video useful. If you like the video, give it a like. Share it with your friends who wants to make their career in Swift. Do you have any suggestions regarding the content? Comments section is all yours. If you want such type of informative videos, then do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.